Hello everybody, Brandon here with a tech tip video. I just want to show you guys what uh, happened to me and uh, hopefully it can help you guys in the future and how I got around to fixing my problem. I have a uh, uh, Mercury 115. Uh, this is an EFI 4 stroke. Uh, I believe this is a 2006. So my issue was uh, I had some um, throttle issue. So basically I could idle, um, I could uh, throttle, but for some reason I couldn't get up the plane. So I was going about maybe half the speed that I wanted. So I couldn't get up to speed and then I couldn't get up to plane and I finally figured it out. First I'm going to run my earmuffs right here. Let me get my hose ready. In the later part of this video I can show you guys uh, how to actually clean them. So if you're in a pinch, you can clean them. If not, you can buy them. So I went to the mechanic shops, and at that time they were charging $270 per injector. So that would have been over a thousand bucks right there. So this actually does not just apply for uh, mercury. This actually applies to any um, fuel injected uh, motor. But specifically, I'm working on the mercury, and I believe this is also uh, the same fuel injectors for a Yamaha. So. Anyways, let's go put in our water and let's go turn on the engine. But let's do that test. So now you guys hear this hum, right? Okay, take note of that idle. I'm gonna unplug this one right here. So you see that? The engine is struggling, okay? So now it's back. So that tells me that particular injector is good. That's working. Take another one out. You see that? If that's your idle right there and it makes a difference, then that means it's totally fine. So put that back in. Now it's working. See, when you unplug that, you're basically simulating turning off the injector. Meaning it's plugged or that coil is no good or the injector is totally not good at all. Okay, let's do one more. You see that? Okay. So that's a good one again. And then I have one more down here. There, I took it off guys. You can see there's kind of a knocking and an unnatural sound. So there you go. So that's one good way to know if all those things are working. The moment one is pulled out and you don't see any difference, you know there's something wrong. Okay, so now let's go about trying to figure out how to take these guys off okay if you actually go on amazon you're gonna find it's 50 dollars for four it's gonna be 50 bucks for four or over a thousand for four you tell me which is better and for the exact same part because right here it says right here this is the part number cdh210 okay so this is what it looks like and uh, we got two pins right here it's orange we got two seals one here and one here Okay, and there's gonna be another boot around here which will be included on that side. It's a little bit tricky to pull it out, but putting it in is even more important because you don't wanna damage these seals. So you're gonna to wanna to lubricate this seal so it goes in there smoothly. If you try to force it in, you're tell I'm telling you right now, you're gonna run into the same mistake I did and you're gonna mar that O-ring and then you're gonna have an even bigger problem. Now you're gonna to have to get a new set because it's hard to find these O-rings, okay? All right, guys, so what you're going to need is to get rid of this fuel filter by removing this 10 mil bolt right there. And then this is going to be a 10 mil up top. You can see that. And then this is going to be a 13 mil. So there's going to be one, one 10 mil, one 13, and another 13. So two 13s and one 10 mil, okay? And then also you got to watch out. There's grommets back here. I lost one, so I just put a few washers back there. I don't know if you can see that, yeah, right there, right there, where that on the other side of that bolt, and there's plastic grommets right behind here, behind this bolt. So I just make sure that, that those are in place. Okay, here it is, guys. Let's crack this one open. Okay, and then at the same time, let's crack this one open. Okay, don't ever put too much pressure on any of these bolts, guys, because you will have to take them off, and you're gonna cause yourself a problem. Okay, so that's cracked. 
Now let's crack the 13 mil. So right here. Another one down here. Okay. So first let's go remove this bolt just to give ourselves some clearance because you're gonna want some clearance to get your hand in there. Okay. Keep your bolts to the side so you don't lose them. First, let's get rid of the 13 mil because that 10 mil has a kind of a grommet that's prone to fall off. So let's do that one last. Okay, now I'm working on the one in the bottom. Okay, so that comes with a uh, split washer and a washer. Okay, let's do the other one up here. It's probably not a, not a bad idea to put anti seize on these as well, just to prevent it from. Uh, seizing up on you okay here's the other bolt okay now time to do that last one so be careful with this one because that those grommets are prone to fall off but anyways I ended up replacing it with washers because I couldn't find it so I keep a hold of that rail all right I got that one 10 mil out so it comes on the rail like this Okay, you're going to see there's a, a boot on this side, which it doesn't come with the set that you buy. So you better save those. Okay. The reason why I'm pulling this out, even though it's totally fine, is because there's one used one on this pile. Because the one that Amazon sent me uh, had one defective one. So they sent me another four and they said, uh, just take one out from that pile. So that's what I'm going to do. And at the same time, since I know that it could be defective, I have to go test it before I return it. And so this is that one used one which was still working remember i had three or four working so i did have spares to use okay guys just bear in mind there is fuel here so you're gonna have to get yourself a rag down there right so this is that used one so i'm gonna pull it out bear in mind there's gonna be fluid coming out of there. there's gonna be gas so also uh it could be a little tricky trying to get it out because there is a seal there so just kind of wiggle it slowly and it should pop out and a little bit of liquid will come out right there you see all that but that's just gas okay so just one thing we got to do is we got to take this grommet right here which it doesn't come with and put it onto this one here okay but it's exactly the same guys cdh210 okay and uh, if you stay tuned to the end of the video i'm going to show you guys how to clean them in case uh, you don't have the part with you and also how to troubleshoot so basically we can put a meter between these two prongs to make sure that the coil is good also another thing before you put this back in is you're going to want to put some lubricant on here okay because if you don't i'm telling you you're going to end up marring this and don't squeeze it in there it should just pop right in okay so let me get some lubricant okay so i got some little a little bit of grease here so it didn't take much just that much right there and go around that seal so it goes in there nice and smooth okay okay there it is where's my rag okay so putting it back in it's uh, just as easy as taking it out maybe even easier so get it in there so like i said be careful be gentle the moment you see too much resistance there you see how easy that was okay another trick is to make sure this uh, prong connection is in between these two tabs otherwise this thing won't go in so a good way to check is to put it in there right away okay so that's a nice click make sure we're fully seated at all the injectors okay okay great okay so let's put this one in to the top it's a little bit tricky there it is because it does have the grommet back there but I'm using the two washers so there's no keeper for it okay aside from the bolt okay all right so let's put them all in now slowly carefully make sure they're all lined up okay so they do have a little bit of play make sure they're all in 
Okay, all right, so easily they're all plugged in there. Okay, let me see if I can see that. Okay, so they're all plugged in. Now I can tighten up this 10 mil. Okay, that's in there. Okay, so another thing before you start putting this uh, whole rail back is to make sure these black grommets are in there. Otherwise, you'll have to take that rail off. Back here. And another one down here. So now let's get the other 13 mil bolts in. So that's how easy it is, guys. So it's a good way to learn how to take these off without having to go to a mechanic because you know it doesn't really take that much. And you're probably gonna save yourself headaches. And you just want to get back on the water again. Okay, just do a little bit of hand tightness to make sure that you're fully lined up before you go cinching anything in okay so that's all those are all hand tight you can see these grommets are in there all, all of them are even so right there okay so all flush and then get these connectors in before you cinch anything on because if it's, if it's crooked guys you won't be able to get that in so they're all in so now let's tighten this okay Let's go ahead and find those. Don't go extra tight on these guys. Last thing you want is the bigger problem. Okay, this one down. Now this other one. Okay. Okay. Now let's get that last 10 mil on the top okay okay that's all you don't want to go crazy tight okay let's put that fuel filter back put this back in here okay Get the camera's in the way Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it on again and see how it performs. Okay, so far it sounds as healthy as it was earlier. Let's go double check. So let's take that third one off. Right there guys, that's how you know it's working. Okay, we can probably check them all just to make sure we didn't damage anything. Yeah, you see that idle change? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Then the other one. Yeah, I shouldn't have put that back. Yep. There you go, guys. There you go. Now you have completely saved yourself over a thousand dollars uh that's just on the part i don't even know about the labor so now let's uh check out how to clean one okay so I'll check you guys out in a little bit all right guys so the things you will need you're gonna need yourself a screwdriver uh if you can get yourself a meter okay get yourself a power source which will be a uh, 12 volt battery get yourself some carb clean and get yourself an air compressor right there okay let's get yourself your injector okay right here uh, first thing is what you're gonna want to do is take your meter this is just a cheap old automotive meter what you want to make sure to find out is uh, if the coil in here is any good so basically if it's a dead short that's no good uh, if it's an open coil that's also no good so one thing you can find out is get yourself a meter you're gonna want to put it on the resistance setting which is that one with the omega symbol that thing right there so put it on the lowest setting which will be the 200 okay so what you want to do is get these and put it right on those prongs and see if you get a reading so note you can also compare your readings towards all the other uh, injectors that are known to be working you can tell that test that we just did 
I'm getting around 21 ohms. So 21 ohms, that's good. And then you can compare it to the rest. So, get another one right here. So it's not really about uh, what you're reading. Uh, if you're getting, if you're getting resistance, that's good. But if you're getting open, an open resistance, meaning it's the wire is broken inside, so that's what you're looking for. Also, if it's a dead short. So this one's reading around 18. Okay, read this one. So this one's reading 17. So that's good. All right, 18. And we'll test the other one. Maybe I, I measured that first one wrong because uh, the two are reading both 18s. Measure that up. Yeah, that's also 18. Let's remeasure that first one. Maybe I wasn't putting it on right. Yeah, it's reading 18 as well, 17.5. So those are all reading the same. Okay, so next thing. Now that you've deemed that uh, your resistance is good and the coil is good, then you don't have to worry about that. So the next thing, get yourself some fuel hose, right? What you want, what you're gonna want to do is take this. So take this grommet off, okay? And also take that seal off as well. That's on here. Take, take this, put it on top. And that hose, just like that, okay? Get yourself an O-ring. Uh, a little uh, O clamp, hose clamp. Sorry. Oof, kind of warm today, guys. Okay. Take that on there, just like that. Take your screwdriver. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna tighten that up. Don't go crazy tight. Just enough so it doesn't leak. Okay, that's good. Another thing, you're gonna get yourself some wire. Okay, and then you're gonna want to get yourself. A little uh, female quick connector to go into these prongs. So get yourself, bring this to the shop, get yourself a couple of these just so you can put it right on that prong. Okay. So we're going to put it right there. Don't go crazy because you don't want to bend it, right? And then the other wire, the color doesn't really matter because it is a coil, so it doesn't matter which way you go. 12 volt. You use this 12 volt circuit. Okay, right there. Be careful not to touch those. Make sure they're separated. You don't want to short those wires. Okay. So the idea here now is to get this other end uh, with another O-ring, O-clamp, right? And what you're gonna want to do is fill this up with fluid, right here, uh, car clean. Fill it up as much as you can, that way you can have uh, multiple times of uh, cycling it. <laughs> Wear some safety glasses on this one guys. Okay, yeah, it's almost full. So, okay, yeah, bubbling up. Okay, so get yourself that air compressor fitting. Shove it in right there, close it off. So what you're gonna wanna do is pressurize that line. Okay, let me go turn on the compressor. Okay. So what's next here is get yourself a little rag, put it on the ground, okay, like so. And you're gonna want to point this down so you can see how the action is. You might see it completely plugged. You might see it kind of like stream out like this. But you, what you want to see is an atomization spray. Okay, that's when you know it's working good. Okay, so get your battery. Put that 12 volt in. Okay. Now the idea here is to keep this out hold it so and get this now we're going to pressurize it so you can tell it's pressurized it's not leaking that means it's a good seal now let's prove if it's plugged okay you see that see how it's it 
see how that atomizes the spray so that's a good one the moment you see that if that's plugged or maybe it's coming into a few different streams uh, that's no good and a good way to see that is if you point it on a object you can see so you can probably just hold this up you see that guys so that's all that carb cleaner cleaning it out so run that dry So now you've used up all that liquid and if you can get it to atomize you know it's working really really well okay so let's uh, undo the battery now undo the connection okay and now that's deemed to be cleaned and ready for use so you can do this for troubleshooting or you can just use it for uh, just doing regular maintenance but you have to know that if you have to do this there's something wrong in your fuel some sort of contamination issue but this will get you by in a pinch okay take this off and now that's deemed ready to be used and tested back onto that uh, engine okay there you guys have it i hope that helped you guys out hopefully that saved you guys thousands of money because it surely did help me out and i uh, hope you guys like that type of content anyways if you let me know how you guys did leave a comment below and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you and uh, don't forget to check out my other fishing videos but for now tight lines happy fishing and happy boating